Coming up next, Super Beta is back. Stay tuned. Hey, retro tech heads, and welcome to another edition of Dave's Retro Video Lab, the show where I check out all things related to old school consumer video cameras from the 80s and 90s. Okay, so not long ago, I recorded a rather lengthy episode of the show where I tested out a Sony Super Beta Movie BMC 660. Well, it didn't work out as I'd hoped. Take a look. Okay, now it's time to see if the camera works. All right, here we go in three, two, one. Oh boy, it doesn't seem like it wants to work. Oh, oh well, uh, I may have a tool that'll help this. Uh, let's see. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Wow, well, since that camera was a big fat dud, my millennial YouTube consultant suggested that I scrap the whole episode and move on. They said, Dave, you can't end the show with a big disappointment. There needs to be a payoff for your audience. Okay, so you guys need to be satisfied somehow, right? That means somehow I have to find a guaranteed, fully functional BMC 660, which is going to be almost impossible. I can't even begin to tell you how many 660s I've purchased in the past, which did not work. I'm almost embarrassed to say it. Where the heck am I going to find a fully functional Sony BMC 660? Well, the internet, of course. So I did some digging and I found this guy online who restores and sells old Sony video cameras. The next thing I know, bada bing, bada boom, and a few clicks later, I caved and purchased what I hope <laughs> is a fully restored Sony BMC 660. That's right, my friends, just for you, I ponied up a heck of a lot of cash so you can hopefully have your big payoff. Now, I didn't just purchase the camera to satisfy your needs, I have always wanted to add one of these to my collection as well. Why? It's a super beta, of course, and I think it's just plain cool. Now, before we get started, let's take a quick look at what's under the hood of this super beta movie badass. The Sony BMC 660 went on sale in 1986 as part of Sony's new line of super beta gear. Retailing for just under $1,500, the 660 didn't offer much in the way of features. It couldn't play back tapes, it had no electronic viewfinder, no titler, and it sucked in low light. That all being said, its standout feature was certainly its superior image resolution. Sony's BMC 660 put out almost 300 lines of horizontal resolution, which gave it a 20% bump in image quality over the competition. Beyond that, the BMC 660 offered a ho-hum set of extras, which included a 6 to 1 power zoom lens, infrared autofocus, and a basic LCD display. Finally, the 660 weighed in at a hefty 5.8 pounds without a battery or tape, so it was kind of on the chunky side as far as camcorders were concerned. I don't know what Sony was thinking, but they were not going to win the format wars on just resolution alone. Okay, before we see if this thing works, I wanted to point out one more feature for those of us, like myself, who don't bother to read the instruction manual. Underneath the 660 is this little door which hides a small white switch. That switch selects which format the camera will record in. You can choose between super beta mode or standard beta mode. Now, what's really silly about all this, Sony had to go as far as to slapping a sticker on the camera to point out where the hidden access panel was located. Now, why the switch is underneath the camera and not up here somewhere is beyond me. Again, Sony, what were you thinking? Okay, now the moment of truth. Did my hard-earned scratch buy me a working Sony Super Beta Movie BMC 660? Well, let's see. First, we will need to power the camera. Next, we will need a blank videotape, 
And finally, we may need a little bit of prayer and a whole heck of a lot of luck. So uh, one annoying issue here is how I have to test this camera. Normally, I take the camera, I point it at a test chart, I turn it on, I look at the monitor over here, and boom, we all know right away if the camera works, right? Oh, no, 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 not my super beta movie friend here. Since this camera has no video output and no playback capability, I have to record the test footage onto a tape and eject the tape from the camcorder, put it in a Super Beta VCR, and then, and only then, I can play it back to see if this darn thing works. Well, how annoying is that? What a pain that must have been back in 1986 when you recorded your niece's first steps at your cousin Jimmy's house, but you couldn't play back the footage for Aunt Carol because Jimmy only had a VHS deck. And you can see where I'm going with this. Anyway, I know you all have ants in your pants, so let's get down to business. Let's fire this thing up and see if it works. Okay, now it is the moment of truth. It's time to see if our Sony BMC 660 here actually works. Uh, did all that money I spend on this thing actually pay off and did I get a working camera here? It's time to find out. Here we go. I got the power cable hooked up over here in the back. The next thing I'm going to need is a beta tape. We're gonna put it in the camera. So far, everything I'm hearing is good. I hear the tape being spooled up. That's all great. Uh, it's ready to go. So now we're gonna pick it up. I'm gonna record uh, several seconds worth of footage. Uh, I'll stop recording, put the tape in the Super Beta deck, and then we're gonna find out if this uh, BMC 660 actually works. So here we go. And three, two, one, and I'm recording. Okay, so far so good. I hear uh, the camera is recording amazingly enough, uh, but I wanna record for about a minute. I'm gonna speed through this so you guys don't have to sit through this, okay? And we'll be right back. I'm just gonna record some more footage here. Okay, well, I stopped recording, and now it's the moment of truth. We're gonna take the tape out of the camera and we're gonna put it in our Super Beta deck. All right. Now I'm going to rewind it for just a little bit. I see a control track, that's good. And here we go. Hey, look at that, it actually worked. Oh my gosh, that is truly incredible. I can't begin to tell you how many times I hoped for this and it never happened. So that being said, let's go take the 660 out, kick the tires and see what it can do. I thought it might be interesting to see just how much light Sony's BMC 660 needed in order to produce a good image. Since the camera has no manual iris, I had to rely on the 660's auto iris feature to do all the work. I would start recording at 220 lux and eventually stop at about 870 lux. I manually set the camera's white balance, which I measured to be about 3300 Kelvin. When I compared the different exposure samples, I thought 420 lux looked the best. I wanted to go back and clean up the shot because I thought the background was too dark and I didn't like my framing. This time around, I was able to adjust the lights to about 390 lux and set the camera's white balance to the indoor setting, which is usually rated at 3200 Kelvin. Hey, I am so glad that this Sony BMC 660 actually works. I finally captured my white whale and I'm so excited uh, to finally have a working version of this camera. So, well, that wraps up another edition of our show. I'm Dave, your retro video lab tech, and I want to thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and make sure you click on the notification bell so you get updates on all future Retro Video Lab episodes. I want to thank you for watching and we hope to see you again soon. Take care. Yay, we got
got that done. 